So we've talked about Super Heavy Samurai, we've talked about Rescue Ace, and now I want to get into something a little more, I guess, closer to home for me. And if you don't know what the Infinite Tracks are, they are basically like a good chunk of the engine for the Earth Machine deck, which is basically a pile of different monsters that are Earth and Machines that combine to either control the game or to OTK. It's like the definition of a mid-range deck that can either completely combo off or it can rely on its back row. And now with the Infinite Track Road Roller, it actually opens up the deck's possibilities because now there are potential plays and boards that you can make without being locked into Earth Machine. That was really why it was called Earth Machine because the one of the most focal cards in the entire deck locked you into Earth Machine monsters after you used its effect to summon another one from deck. So the ability now to get extenders without having to rely on, you know, locking yourself is actually really effective. And if you watch my first Super Heavy Samurai video, you would have known that I was a big Infinitrack fan in the time that I've spent off screen. So to see more support for the archetype is definitely not something that I'm gonna be um, disappointed at. Basically, Road Roller over here is a card with a lot of recursion because every time an earth machine is tributed or banished face up he can summon himself from the graveyard or hand when he is an exceed material on a machine exceed monsters he's a mini baguska he makes any machine a mini baguska forces all of your opponent's monsters to defense and they lose a thousand defense now we're sort of building boards that can you know control the opponent better on top of floodgates and on top of small interactions with the opponent. And now that we know that Earth Machine doesn't have to have those restrictions, we could go back to playing regular Earth Machine and just stick in a few copies of Road Roller, or we can get a little creative and we could build a Earth Machine pile, Finitrax, Machinas, Super Heavies, try to see what we can do there. Super Heavies have a lot of one card starters that help the deck reach its full potential. And so I just wanted to go through some replays with you guys as to what Infinitrack could do with, if you start mixing it with some of these Super Heavy Samurai cards. So Super Heavy Samurais, Earth Machines, and Road Roller. Let's see what the full potential of some of these. You can see this first end board. We have Citadel, we have Train, we have Regulus, we have Baron, and it's not too hard to see how you get into the Baron and the Regulus, but you know, maybe for you guys who are less experienced with Earth Machine, you may not understand how we get to some of these Xyz, especially off a simple um, one card starter like a Soul Piercer. So basically, super heavy combo is to set up the Baron and a Pendulum Scale again. This time we do also have the Soul Piercer to extend with our Scarecrow. We go into Scale, Scale brings back the um, Piercer. Now we go Gear Gigant, which synergizes with basically anything in our deck because all of everything we have is machines on class baron summon mills of machina citadel then we go into ballista get our plus two he goes for anchor drill plus gearbox then he goes for a genius before he sets up a pendulum summon now he gets the brutal dozer and then he goes into captain sargus using two level fours to get regulus extra negate before he continues his place and then Baron pop the equip that Regulus used so that they can get an extra search. It's literally free. Regulus stays on field. He still counts as a negate and you get an extra card in hand. If that's not something you're doing already, just make sure that's why going into Baron, even if you aren't negating a nib or even if your opponent has no hand traps, going into a Baron is still really good in this deck. Next, we go Bruto Dozer, Tribute. We get to overlay for our River Stormer, search any Earth Machine, link off into Double Headed Anger Knuckle so that we can start to revive our Citadel. And then on Citadel Summon, we get to summon Derek Crane. And from those two, we get to overlay a rank 10. And now it's even better with Sargus because um, this is a quick effect to detach and Sargus also has a trigger effect. So he detaches, he makes one monster you control unaffected by opponent's card effects or unaffected by all card effects actually. And then with the detached Derek Crane, he gets to destroy a card on field. 
and with the detach also triggering Sargus to return a card on field back to hand. Oh, you can either destroy or return to hand. And so Sargus gives you an option. So maybe you you should save your um, rail cannon for something that's maybe when they have two cards on board or something that's a little more. Maybe let them play a little bit and then stop them right before they get into something important. I think maybe that might be the play. And you still have two Omni, Omni Negates. Lots of setup. You, you have the Tunneler for the draw too. Oh, okay, so we preemptively detached from Dora to pop our own Anger Knuckle to revive the Citadel so that Citadel is live during your opponent's turn. Basically, it can destroy itself and right get your opponent's board as long as your monsters have 3000 or less attack, which is just insane. And now we're using the Tunneler for a draw too. And so this version of Earth Machine, it has a way higher ceiling compared to any version of Earth Machine we've ever seen. The only issue is that we can't play any spells and traps because we need to be able to resolve some of these super heavy samurai effects to reach this very high ceiling, and especially for the Baron. Well, not for Benke, but for the Prodigy and for Scarecrow. So basically, if you want these one card starters, you have to find a way to play around hand traps simply just using your monsters. So next, we have a very similar end board, but created with different cards. So this one is going to be with Metal Cruncher, which is something that I'm sure a lot of people haven't seen in a while, right? So you reveal three of the same Earth Machine, then you get to guarantee to add one from deck to hand. So this time we chose Bike, Bike to add Prodigy, Prodigy to get Big Bang K, Big Bang K to get Piercer, Link into Scarecrow, search off of Piercer, to drop one, go into Ballista, Add another Wakashi, add a gearbox, and then gearbox add an anchor drill. So now we peacemaker for the scarecrow to get rid of it. We scales, and now we genius to clear up um, space for a pendulum summon. Literally summon four. Add it. infinite track Buddha dozer. You go for excel synchro. Go into Baron. We bike so we can overlay into Gear Gigant. Search on class bar, on class bar effect. We mill our citadel again. We get Sargus to go for Regulus, and now we're gonna Regulus equip P Piercer, Baron Pop. Get another search, and now we get to Dozer. Bring out Tunneler. Go for River Stormer. And now we get to go into Anger Knuckle. Overlay for our very big train. Um, detach one from train to trigger Sargus. Sargus pop around Anger Knuckle, which triggers Citadel. Citadel come back and we've made the exact same board off of a Metal Cruncher. Basically Metal Cruncher plus bike. But if you just open Metal Cruncher by itself, it's still okay. So this time we're working off of gear frame, which is, I guess you could say the weakest start to this entire uh, combo. So basically with the Gear Gigant start, we we have to start with, uh, not Gear Gigant, with the Gear Frame start. We have to start with Gear Frame search on Uncle Spar. And the issue with doing that at the beginning of your turn is that Uncle Spar locks you into machines only. Now. I may personally show you a combo that, you know, might not care if you're locked into machines, but like objectively, that's a bad thing, right? So now instead of being able to go for Baron and Borload, like we're going to be locked into Regulus and, you know, into machine monsters, which although the deck is mostly machine and that and this mash is mostly just for people who want to play Infinitrax in a stronger way and to use Earth Machine in modern format, I think this might be the best way to do it. Even though pure super heavy or FDK super heavy might just be stronger, I I don't I don't think this is a bad way to play the deck. Because it's one one, it's unique and two, it's like it gives you a lot of surprise factor and you still get to draw cards and 
the deck list may be a little more convoluted it may be harder to find a particular list but look we just ended with six cards in hand right so we sacrifice an omni negate for an, an extra card in hand doesn't really sound worth it when you you know put it out like that but still the board is pretty much the same right now we haven't gotten into the road ruler part of things yet and that's because i had to come up with some road ruler combos myself but before we go into the road ruler combo i want to show you guys how infinite track could potentially make castira a rise heart now this is a two card combo with metal cruncher now the old ways that we would you know search harvester and then we um go for a trencher and basically we go Ballista and the two monsters we search off of Ballista would be discarded to um, summon out Fortress, right? So now we have Fortress and then one of those monsters is gonna be Trencher. So we banish Trencher, bring back Harvester. And then um, we contribute our Ballista, special amount Crab Crane. Now Fortress is level seven, but Harvester and Crab Crane are two and five. And if you know Harvester's effect, you know that it can increase the level of itself and make both it and the crab crane level seven meaning you can just summon a cast or a rise heart that is just immediately live and although you may have used your normal summon and you may be like locked out of playing for the rest of the turn it's still not a bad way to make an arise heart because now this you have an arise heart pass that cannot be targeted and if you have road roller which you might um, when your opponent banishes, or when you detach and your monster gets banished, you can trigger Road Roller there too, right? So Road Roller actually isn't the worst card to mix with Kashira a Rise Heart, because if you keep attaching Road Roller to it, um, it basically switches everything to defense your opponent controls, meaning a Rise Heart can control the field even stronger than it did before. And just to show you what we're working with here, this is the hybrid build that like I that I've been cooking up and I have a few of my own techs in here. Um, basically, anything that you see blank here would basically be non engine. You may not even need some of these cards in engine, but I just want to show you guys a way that you could make use of the super heavy and infinite track support together with a replay featuring um, Road Roller in the opening hand. And this time we have Gear Frame that we're starting with. Gear Frame gets on Unc Bar. And this time we don't mind that we're locked because we're gonna be milling our Ruin Force. Um, we Gear Gigant, we search for Wakashi and Wakashi basically carries the fucking combo. We go for Big Benke. Big Benke gets Soul Gaia booster. And this is why Wakashi is like a one card starter because he adds a level four extender that basically summons itself because you control Wakashi. So booster summon itself. Then we go for tilting entrainment. So I just want to state here that entrainment does a lot of cool things at once, right? Um, so you use it for a synchro summon or you synchro summon into it. And immediately when it's synchro summoned, you can special summon a level four or pendulum from your hand or face up extra deck, meaning the tuner, since Wakashi is a tuner, you can immediately just summon the Wakashi back from the extra deck and then just use it for a synchro again. Use it for a synchro, link, um, whatever you wanna do with it. We use it to go into the new Super Heavy Samurai level 12 and that's because one, it's an earth machine and two, it is generic. It has no, um, you know, uh, specific requirements for tuners and non-tuners so that's great and three because it's level 12 the second we get this to graveyard this is a second summon for ruin force not only you know is it so strong by itself that you know it can potentially go for a game with this and ruin force alone but it also just sets up really good extension plays so yeah so we bring out ruin force and basically because we bring out Rune Force. Um, we are allowed to summon out Road Roller, which, because you know a machine was banished, Road Roller is allowed to come out. Now we can make our Ballista, Ballista Search Box, Box Search Tumbler. We go for a Genius. Oh, 
did not mean to swap there. We links, uh, we pendulum summon both our level five and our box to add our level 10. Then we go for River Stormer. We go for Dara Crane, Dara Crane, and then we get to banish level 12 to go into Ruin Force. And now we have, um, you know, two level 10 set up so that we can make our Super Dora. And it's really great because Ruin Force is not once per turn. So every time that we have, you know, um, enough monsters in Grave to banish for a Ruin Force, we will. Because why the fuck not? <laughs> Um, then we River Stormer so that we can add Regulus to hand and we've kept, oh my god, I keep swapping instead of pausing. Alright, you guys probably didn't get that. But basically what we did is that we Regulus for Gear Frame and Gear Frame when it's equipped once per turn it can special summon itself. So basically Regulus summon Gear Frame is like the best thing that you can do with Gear Frame. Um, so when you go for Gear Gigant at the very start of the combo, always detach Gear Frame, right? Because when you eventually get into the Regulus, you can equip Gear Frame to it, then summon Gear Frame back, then you have an extra level four extender, which we used to go into uh, Champion Sargus because, it, you know, although we are locked into machines, it is not a bad place to be in um, to have, you know, Regulus plus Dora. Um, and if I, you know, set this up a little better, I'm sure that I could have gotten um, another Omni Negate or something on board. Um, and this is only two cards. We have all the non-engine. Um, River Stormer does still have Road Roller attached, so we have us a little mini Baguska. Anything that they summon goes into defense. And um, yeah, you know. Also with the Dora and Sargus mix, you know, when you detach from Dora, Sargus will also trigger to potentially pop one on field. You could uh, preemptively detach from Dora here to trigger Sargus and, uh, you know, make Sargus um, detach one as well. Wait, no, Sargus isn't detached, my fault. Turn three, you have options to go into Zeus. You have, you know, your Juggernaut Lieb. You have um, a lot of cool things that you can go into here. It's really personal choice on how you want to extend with this. I also, you know, I do feel a bit goofy because we searched Regulus here before we actually made Sargus when, like, if I would have just had a level four extender before I went into River Stormer, I could have made Sargus before um, making River Stormer, meaning that I could have searched um, Regulus off of the Sargus and then gotten something else off the River Stormer. This combo is definitely not optimal yet. Like if you start with a Piercer, I know you can go into Baron before getting yourself locked. So I want to explore more with like what we can do if we don't draw, if we don't draw a gear frame. I know literally with these two, the combo isn't optimal yet, but when you go with Kashi and you bring him out, right? Like you bring out Benkei in the other scale, you bring out Wakashi and then you Benkei for your either your Soul Piercer or your Gaia Booster. This time I like to add Soul Piercer if Wakashi is the starter because we are going to be going into um, into Scarecrow first, right? So we get to bring out Scarecrow and we get to go search one for that. And this time you can make the Soul Peacemaker. Now the great thing is that Scarecrow works really great with Road Roller because Road Roller doesn't have to be in hand, it can be in Grave, so we can discard Road Roller, get back our free plus, and then we can activate our Soul Peacemaker on our Scarecrow, get rid of it early, and then we can tribute it to summon um, another Wakashi from deck because we want our tuner. And that also triggers Road Roller. So Road Roller gets to come back and at this point you can synchro for your tilting you can you don't have to synchro for excel starters yet like um honestly i did goof a bit because you could synchro for bike before you go into or you could search a bike before you search this wakashi 
so that you have the level 2 engraved to set up for the Excel Star to Synchro Dragon. Or you could do the entrainment route, but basically it won't be hard to set up a link from here or a pendulum summon from here or even like an overlay for two level fours, you know, because you still have Soul Piercer. Um, let's, you know, explore this a bit. Right, you have Tilting Entrainment and now you have a search off Soul Piercer. You have a special summon off Entrainment and then you also have um, a um, chain block with Wakashi to put itself back on scale, right? So that you're always putting the proper one back on scale if you do a chain link three and then you special summon the first one in chain link two. And then um, we get the search off of Soul Piercer in chain link one. And this time we're gonna search the bike. So the bike can uh, discard itself and get us to Gaia Booster. If you already have bike, then you know you go for Gaia Booster here. You activate Gaia Booster on the Wakashi because you won't be seeing Super Heavy Samurais again for uh, quite a while. And then you activate Wakashi here. Boom. And this is where you set up for a Pendulum. Um, you go either Gurgigant or you go Merrymaker into Sargus. Um, I, I st I'm still not completely sure myself on what's the best route here. And, you know, I'm sure we can work on that together as a community. It feels like there's potential here, but I just have not explored all of it yet. And that's basically the idea behind Road Roller. It's a sort of versatile card that doesn't really matter which variant of Earth Machine that you're playing, like Road Roller still works. And that's sort of like the second half of this video, the Road Roller part that I wanted to emphasize. Like it's a great um, support card for the deck. It, it doesn't carry the deck itself, but it does, you know, allow for more versatility in the deck building on top of the Super Epic Samurais. I know Super Epic Samurais kind of, you know, stole the show in this one, but they are Earth Machines for the most part. So, you know, to be fair, they fit right into the deck without having to change much other than not playing spell and trap cards anymore. You know, I'll take a few um, uh, a few Omni Negates in return for, you know, no longer having to open um, Overdrive or, you know, multiple Machina redeployments, you know, not saying that that's the worst thing in the world, but, you know, it, it definitely feels better to have proper routes into plays instead of relying on, you know, very rigid normal summon one card starters. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think about uh, Infinite Track Road Roller in the comment section down below if you guys have your own ideas on how this card could potentially be used. And I will see you guys in the next video where we're talking about Teller Knight, I believe.